Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Amen. Pastor, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. I really, really want to appreciate and honor everyone. We may not have the time to honor everyone one by one, but I sincerely honor you from the depth of my heart. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Um, let's pray. We have a lot to do. Amen. Just lift your hands to heaven and let us bless the King of Kings. Except you help a man, O oh God, that man cannot be helped. Except you lift a man, that man cannot be lifted. So we thank you we are not ashamed to let the world know that you are the reason behind everything that is worth celebrating in our lives. We thank you, O God of heaven. Ask the Lord to visit you tonight in this conference. Cry from the depth of your heart. Ask the Lord to give you a visitation. Let it not just be a ritual, a program. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Visit us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Parusa tekete balada bast, manta branda gado satali brahas kada balika tash. This is part of the meeting. Zike parush kabaruda sabranda gada lakata. Shibra gada balada da. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, 
your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel. Holy Spirit and be glorified in our midst in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. I'd like you to be very sensitive. Let's see how the Lord will help us tonight. It's always an honor bringing the word of the Lord because you see the word of God represents the boundaries of his commitment to man. God cannot be committed to man outside of the provisions of scripture. The Bible and scripture is the jurisdiction of his commitment. That is not all he can do, but in relation to man, he has limited himself to the provisions in scripture. So any dimension that scripture does not allow cannot be seen in the lifetime of a man. The Bible represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment. So every time scripture is opened, we're not just, it's, it's more than a Bible study. It's an allowance to say, Lord, we have found that this is how far you can come through for us. And so we authorize you and we grant you access through our willingness. Even though he is mighty, he has limited himself to the will of man. So if your will rejects him, the Bible says, as many as received him, anything received can be rejected. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I trust that the Lord will help us tonight. I came with a burden just to share a few things. I am very passionate about strengthening the body of Christ and helping believers grow and mature in the things of the Spirit. And I do not take conferences like this for granted. Um, the only hope we have is our knowledge of the truth. This is what brings liberty. This is what brings efficiency. This is what brings growth. If we do not contend for spiritual growth, then we will get to a point where we will not be able to do much as far as the kingdom is concerned. Praise the Lord. So more than just receiving miracles and breakthroughs, more than receiving healings, I know that people are here for various reasons and God is benevolent enough. In fact, let me start by saying this. In any meeting that was ordained by God, four things must and should happen. Number one, there must be encounters. I'll be teaching on that shortly, but there has to be, if it was authorized by God, then there has to be encounters. The Bible says, ye are come unto Mount Zion. Then he begins to describe activities that happens there. He says, in Zion there are innumerable company of angels, not just members. Angels are there too. They are the spirits of just men made perfect. Christ himself, the first, the begotten of the Father. Several things happen within that place. Encounters. The goal of an encounter is to create certainty and conviction. When a generation lacks encounters, our convictions will vacillate. So we believe this today and we believe that tomorrow and we're no longer sure of this. But the apostle said, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded number two there must be transformation transformation very important the ministry of the word brings transformation growth in our understanding enlightenment 
that access to light opens up our eyes so that we are no longer looking through a, a hazy lens. The Bible says, but we all with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror. We're not just beholding and stopping there. We are changed, the Bible says. Transformation. Number three, the third thing that should happen in every meeting where God is truly represented is that an opportunity must be given for the love and the power of God to be made manifest in the midst of his people. God is love and the character of love is that it gives. So the benevolence of God must be represented in every meeting. When lives are changed, when yokes are taken off people, when destinies are transformed, when age-long captivities end overnight, that is the signature of God's love in the midst of his people. More than an endorsement of the power of a man of God is a message from God that I am still love and I am still mighty. The same way sickness and infirmity and all these ills, they are like letters from Satan to God using man as the paper. So he writes on man the zenith of God's creation. It's a mockery of God's integrity. So when God stretches his hands, it's a reply also using man to speak to Satan that I am still king of kings and lord of lords. So when miracles and signs and wonders do not happen to the degree that brings glory to the Christ, it begins to misrepresent the names and the attributes of God. The names of God should not just be believed theologically, there should be a demonstration of the reality of it. So if you call him El Shaddai, there must be space in your life where that name would be represented. So that when you are teaching your children, it will not just be from history and theology. You will now say the things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, even that which our hands have handled of the word of life. four the fourth thing that must happen every time we gather like this is that there must be impartations and this impartation is not just from the man of God to you impartation is more than just a transference of grace it's also the mingling of graces because you see in an atmosphere like this it's not only the man of God's anointing that is flowing someone seated close to you can also be carrying a grace that your destiny is looking for so your sensitivity should not just be on the person preaching it should be on the multifaceted dimensions of the grace of God scattered within that vicinity so I can be teaching and not have the grace for prayer but someone seated close to you can have that grace if you can open up your heart while you are receiving the teaching grace something from him he may not be the preacher but his altar is still alive you should not walk out you should know what you received at the end of a meeting if you just go out and just say I was blessed that's, that's, that's too careless for a serious Christian you should leave the meeting knowing specifics that this grace came upon me, speed came upon me, restoration came upon me, hunger came upon me, the appetite for spiritual things came upon me, death to the flesh came upon me, an engracing came upon me, an anointing I did not come for the meeting which is now returning with me. When Saul met Samuel, he was not in confusion as to the fact that something had come upon him. Are you blessed? So while you are seated, please, if you can, lay hands on your head and declare, something must break open in my destiny this night. Oh God, I come with a cry. I come with a cry. More than the ministration of a man, I pray for encounters. I pray for transformation, illumination by the spirit of revelation. I pray, oh God, that your outstretched arm will rest upon my life. Are you praying for everyone that asked receive it? 
Kapurus kata sabanda kaparus sabalas regete bakata zele kaparus asiata. Pray, oh God, that grace for prayer that I've longed for. This is the moment where it will mantle my life. That grace for the prophetic, that grace in the name of Jesus, that discipline in the spirit that I need to push through. This is the season, this is the moment. I open up my spirit to access something from heaven. is part of the meeting. Shamatas kabaranda kaparusia embrekete katu shalaka pras kabadash rekete katu zabragadash I rebuke destruction in the name of Jesus I rebuke carnality. My spirit is open to receive something of substance from the spirit for the sake of my family, for the sake of my destiny, my heart is open. It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels. God's glory on their wings, and like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Job 42 verse 5 I'm teaching on encounters encounters let's call this part 1 Job 42 and verse 5 mm. there is a strong spirit the Lord is showing me four people and the Lord is telling me the spirit of session is coming on those four people yeah. four people now um, we, I pray that we'll finish on time so that we'll have the time to minister but when someone is under the anointing close to you you just help and guide them but these four people I just saw a wind four people four there is an unction it's a grace for intercession you will have the grace to travel like Anna the prophetess, you will stand in the temple and pray until you bet supernatural realities. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach, but I'm seeing the number six, and I'm seeing chains on the feet of people being broken right now. There is an anointing. Help them, please. Six in the spirit. This is what I see. Chains. Chains. In the name of Jesus, I come with this grace and I declare that those chains, I don't care how long they have been, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. And in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I declare chains be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. Please sit down. Help that woman, please. 
Madam, the spirit of death over your life, I rebuke it. That woman you are holding, I rebuke the spirit of death over you and your family. Help those outside. Job 42. Let's see where we can stop for tonight. Someone is going to begin to pray in tongues very loud, shouting. It's the spirit of prayer right now as I'm speaking. Please just allow me. I hope I'm not messing up my teaching session, but it's just the Holy Spirit moving. When you pray and fast and prepare, God responds. God is not a theological reality. He is alive. So this is what God is telling me. It's going to be a loud shout in the spirit. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tents of the righteous. You are drinking of this grace that will turn you into a sign and turn you into a wonder. You have put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in you. Job 42 from verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now my eyes see at thee I have heard of you as a theological topic I have heard a man of God preach about you but now my eyes my eyes I've heard of you like a story I had fathers of faith said you were a healer I heard them say once upon a time you moved. I heard that once upon a time people prophesied in your name. It was just like a theological story. But now, my eyes, I am having an experience of the things that I was told happened. That once upon a time God moved in many families. He moved in many territories. He moved in many places. And those who experienced this archived those stories, but as history. And they told us that God moved. They told us that once upon a time, his outraged power was seen. They told us once upon a time, people got up from wheelchairs. They told us once upon a time, the dead came back to life. But let me tell you this, you do not build conviction just on history. You must pass the realm and the gate of history to a realm of encounter. Job said, I have heard about you with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen you. Encounters. John chapter 4, very quickly, from verse 39, the Bible talks about a woman, the Bible calls her, a Samaritan woman that this woman would come to Jesus by the well and then they began a conversation and discerning he was a prophet she started asking him on aspects of worship and Jesus said the hour is coming when they that worship him was worshiping spirit and truth then verse 39 the Bible says she went please give it to us it says and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman out of the depth of her encounter nobody asked her to preach the fact that we have to push people to preach is a sign that they are not moving from the point of conviction it is impossible to be convicted about a spiritual reality and be silent about it there were people in scripture who Jesus himself pleaded with them to be quiet. The impact was too much for them to be quiet. The Bible says this woman now, on meeting Jesus, she went to the city. Notice that every time they had an encounter, did not, they didn't go to people. They went to cities. The madman in Gadara went to the a Decapolis. 40. And many of the Samaritans 
And so when the Samaritans were come unto him, now listen, she invited them. They came based on her invitation with all kinds of doubts and fears and vacillations of opinions. But when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days. 41. And many more believed because of his own word. So number one, they believed because of her testimony. Number two, they believed because of his teaching. Now they had sat down with him and he was mentoring them. They were validating the things that she told him. 42 and said unto the woman listen to their testimony now this is the third level now we believe not because of your saying madam for we have heard him ourselves and we know that this indeed is the Christ the savior of the world when we were coming we were not sure of who and what we were coming to meet but because your impact was so strong we know you we know your past now we see that you suddenly were transformed who did this we need to come and meet him so we came not because we were interested in that God we came because we wanted to see who made this kind of impact in your life and then step two we sat down in his meeting and in his conference and on hearing him teach we stepped into the next level believing because of our encounter this has nothing to, even if you change it's too late for us to follow you again we have met him ourselves it is dangerous to follow the God of another person and remain as the God of another person you can start with the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob but eventually you must give him a name that comes out of your experience with him that is the name that will preserve you are we blessed encounters are experiences supernatural experiences they don't necessarily have to be visionary experiences but they are supernatural experiences that make spiritual realities true to us now listen the faith life is such that it cannot be carnally discerned you must understand this the the spirit work and the faith life is not science it's not sociology it may borrow elements and aspects of these dimensions but it's higher and greater than it the bible itself tells us that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit why because they are spiritually discerned so when you come into the faith life the way you learn academically speaking the way you learn sociologically speaking may be useful but it may be very limited you will need to access a dimension higher than that realm to understand spiritual things because the the way spiritual things are communicated in many ways they insult the scope of human thinking are we together why will a man hang on a tree claiming to be blameless and by so doing save the world it does not make sense in the physical realm so you have to rise higher than that realm to understand that there are spiritual laws encounters listen to me encounters create conviction the assignment of encounters is to create conviction the certainty of God the certainty of these spiritual laws let me tell you this every time you find out that there are vacillations and inconsistencies in your spiritual work the diagnosis is that your conviction is not yet strong the apostles of the lamb and the fathers of faith who represented the early church you know why many of them could die they could die because they had conviction terrorists today die because they have conviction it is not the truthfulness of what you are saying that moves you it is the reality of it to you i can believe a lie and believe it so strong i am willing to die that's why when jesus found people with conviction it didn't matter whether the information was correct or not he had respect for them conviction so today i believe that god prospers but then under a certain condition i begin to doubt 
when you read your Bible you will see that even the man who ordained Jesus into ministry eventually doubted who he ordained John who was in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey Jesus came and by the prophetic he saw and said behold the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world Jesus said for him to baptize him and he said no 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 I'm not worthy to untie even the latchet of your shoe and Jesus said suffer it to be so it's an ordinance it's a principle that scripture might be fulfilled now under a situation of gross backsliding and offense John sent the disciples and said go and tell Jesus are you really the Messiah are you the one to come or should we expect another so just because you think you believe what you believe now you will be surprised that 10 years down the line, you will be the one fighting the exact thing you believe. There are people today who do not believe in restoration because they fasted for years and said, God, if you're a restorer, restore me. And it did not happen. You see, prolonged pain is dangerous because it can force you to create a theology about God. You will bend through the lens of your pain and come up with a viewpoint about God. And if help does not come fast, you will make a doctrine out of your pain and your limitation about God. There are people today when we say God can favor people, they hate that word because it reminds them of an experience of their waiting for that dimension that did not happen. There are people today when we say God heals, they feel angry and sad. Maybe because something happened to them and they trusted God, that rougher dimension refused to show up. That is why it is important to bring Jesus to the scene here and now. Otherwise, a generation will just become historians and no longer Christians. They would carry a historic book called the Bible and now begin to talk to children. And you see, the generation of our parents, respectfully speaking, were a generation of loyalty. Even if they didn't believe you, they will respect you. But this, our arrogant generation, is a generation of proofs and science. They will ask you questions. They will not believe for nothing. You said Jesus heals, here is someone on a wheelchair. Bring your Jesus there. You said Jesus prospers, here is my house rent. It's expiring within 24 hours. They, they need that manifestation of the grace and the power of God. And if we want to redeem a people and preserve a generation, we must not only advocate the things that are true, we must sustain the grace to defend them. And the name given to that system is an encounter. An encounter creates unbendable conviction. You are willing to live and to die for that truth. Are we blessed? So someone prays in tongues today and by next week he's not even sure of what he's doing again. Someone is saved today and by next week he doesn't, he's, he, he's, he's not even sure whether Christianity is, 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 is a faith life that is worth his journey. Someone believes in walking in integrity today. No, no, I will not pay my way out of this and that. And two weeks later, he's not sure again. But I know whom I have believed. Are we blessed? We are discussing encounters. So that you are convicted. So that you are strengthened. Luke chapter 1. Let's look at something that Dr. Luke began to speak about. Luke chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are what? Most surely believed among us. Not just believed, but most surely believed. Verse 2. It says, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were what? Help me. Eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Three, we're reading to four. It seemed good to me, having had perfect understanding, perfect understanding on the strength of being an eyewitness. I was not just a, 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 benef a benefactor of history. I was there. I saw it. It says, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first 
to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. Read with me if you can see it. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So I don't just want you to respectfully receive it because you respect me. I want you to know the certainty of those things so that when I am no longer there, you will not leave with my departure. Your faith will stand. The disciples walked with Jesus for a long time. And you would think just because they were close to Jesus, they were really convicted. They were there for different reasons, pursuing their various agenda. And when Jesus now began to talk of departing, they were angry because it looked like they had wasted three years of their lives and destiny. And he said, I know what you are looking for. You, are, you don't yet have that conviction. In fact, here's what he told Peter. He said, Peter, Satan had desired to sift you like wheat. But he said, I have prayed for you. And he says, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Because Satan will also come to sift them like wheat. Encounters are powerful. It brings reality. It brings conviction. In Exodus chapter 3, we may not have the time to go through it. The Bible tells us about this young Hebrew hedonistic person who was already on his training to become the next pharaoh of Egypt. And then he ran away because he killed an Egyptian and he ran for his life. And here he was tending the sheep of his father-in-law. Are we together? This was the man who would become the deliverer. But imagine if God just told him, go and meet Pharaoh. Moses would have died like a bird, died like a chicken. You don't stand before Pharaoh just like that. There is something you must have seen and heard. You see, the adversities that we confront are not just scientific. You will have to come based on the strength of conviction that gives you the staying power to remain. Otherwise, you will faint and you will bend and you will run away from battle. And the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Are we still together? So Moses was tending his father-in-law's sheep. And then the Bible says he saw a bush that began to burn and yet not consumed. It's amazing how God lures people into encounters. He will expose you to something that dumbfounds your philosophy. Something will just happen in your life that will force you to not sleep in the night. You will get up and think and say, but I saw this. I saw this. Then he says, Moses, take off thy shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. Then began the conversation between the God of the Hebrews and Moses. At the end of that conversation, he said, Moses, I want to send you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, who will I tell Pharaoh send me? You didn't tell me your name. The name of a man encapsulates his ability. So he's saying, God, reveal to me the extent of your power. I know a bit about the witchcraft in Egypt. I know the gods that they have there and I've, I've seen them. I was trained in the way of the Egyptians. I'm not ignorant about what their gods can do. What is your name? Give me an identity. Give me something that strengthens me. That no matter how Pharaoh roars like a beast, I will not chicken away. And God says, I am that I am. What a name. Go and tell Pharaoh, you met a God who is not, who is not limited. I am that I am. He says, tell Pharaoh, I am had sent you. When Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go, Pharaoh laughed. You would think Pharaoh say, wow, who is that God? I respect him. If there is one attribute about Satan that is what emulating is that he has a dogged resilience. You must come up with a system of resistance for him to flee. He's not going to flee just because the Bible tells you you are victorious. No. Resist the devil and he will flee. So you need encounters. In Acts chapter 9, the Bible talks about Saul who would later become Paul, the apostle that would write to third of the New Testament. The Bible says as, as a scribe and a Pharisee, this guy would obtain letters from the priest and go and persecute Christians. And he believed by so doing that he was doing God's service. 
And then while on his way to Damascus, the Bible records that he had an encounter. The other disciples with him and, their, and, and, and those who were with him just knew that there was a sound, but he saw what the Bible called the light. And he heard a voice from the light, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, you cannot kick against the priest. He said, who are you, Lord? Notice that every time people encountered God, they asked him about him. The fact that we are not asking means that there is something about him we have not found. Because you will need to ask, who are you? He said that, but I, that I may know him. It was the psalmist that said, oh Lord, you are my God. I think 63, Psalm 63 or so. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. My heart thirsts for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water, it says to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. This was the cry of a man who desired to know God. Saul would later become Paul with a depth of persuasion and he was willing to die and would make audacious statements for for me to live is Christ and to die is gain you don't speak like that without conviction our generation knows how to live but we don't know how to die for the things we believe because we lack conviction and the Christianity that will last is one that you will both be able to live and die for the truth you believe it is true are we together conviction Apostle, God is calling me into the healing ministry. Do you believe in healing? I think I do. I read Papa Hagen's book. Wonderful. You are reading history. You need an encounter. You, when you stand before a wheelchair, I assure you, he's not going to have the patience to hear you read Papa Hagen's books. So you read because scriptures should lead you into an experience. Is it not in your Bible? He said, ye search the scripture, for in them you think you will find life. He said, the scriptures testify of me. That means the scriptures are signposts. They should cultivate a hunger and lead you to want to know a person. It should not just end in letters. It should cultivate and spur a hunger in you. can know about God by reading but you know him by an encounter are we blessed I want to share very briefly the dimensions of encounters that we will need in our lives to be effective as Christians to be effective as ministers and to be effective as kingdom ambassadors God is counting on us even in this end time to be able to be promoters of his interest and it's not just going to happen just by desire or zeal we will need solid encounters that will help us frontier the the course of the kingdom within our territories and the lord revealed this to me that there are four levels of encounters please listen carefully we are going to pray it's safe to say tonight is a prayer meeting. So you can see this just as a charge to just warm up our spirit so that we pray a bit. Four levels of encounter. There is no Christian, and believe me, I say this by the authority of God's word. No believer in Christ will ever be effective as far as representing the purposes of the kingdom is concerned if you do not pass through these four levels of encounters. They represent the boundaries of spiritual growth. You must have these encounters. It is non-negotiable if you intend to live for God and if you intend to access the grace that empowers you to represent his purposes. Are we together? Number one, the first level of encounter that we need is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of God. Please write it down. An encounter with Jesus, the Son of God. John 17 and verse 3, Jesus is praying now. And he said, this is eternal life. He lifted up his eyes to pray John 17 and verse 3 that this is life eternal 
his own definition, that they may know thee, the one and true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So, eternal life starts with your confession on stage, but it is a journey, a journey and unfolding. It is not just receiving the life of God and stopping there. It is a journey of exploring the riches of the person Christ. The first encounter in order of priority that you must have if you want to last and if you want your Christianity to be solid is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. 1 John chapter 5, please. Give us from verse 11 and 12. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. It says, this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. Eternal life. It says, and this life is in his son. Verse 12. So that he that hath the son. Now watch this. The Bible says the life of God, what we call Zoe, cannot be received outside of Jesus Christ. That Jesus is the custodian of that life. So to check whether you really have his life, we must check whether you have met him. He said that the character of that life is such that you cannot receive it outside of a relationship with Jesus. That that life is in his son. So that he that had the son had that life. And he that had not the son does not have life. If I put some money in my pocket and you ever claim that that money is in your hand, it means you would have at least met me and even gone that far to reach into my pocket. Is that true? You cannot claim to have what is in my pocket and you've not had any contact with me. So the Bible says that life is not something you pick independent of Jesus. Now, you have to understand that there are different levels and kinds of life. I hope you know that. There is the biological life given to everyone. There is life that is activated by your fraternity with demon spirits. It's higher than the biological life, but it's not the life of God. It can give you an advantage. You can conjure sorcery and witchcraft and live a quality of life that is higher than a natural person. And yet it is not the life of God. You can live a life that is sponsored by by the wealth of intellectual prowess. You are intelligent. You have un explored the principles of life. It will give you a quality of living that is higher than the natural person. And yet that is not the life of God. So there are different kinds and different levels of life. And the Bible says, so that you do not mistake in them. If it is the life of God you are talking about, then you must have met the Son. Whosoever has not met the Son, even if you have been in church, you do not have his life. Are we blessed? John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus was teaching and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and then to destroy. But he said, I am come. This is why I have come now. That ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. You can have, listen, it's one thing to have life, but it's another thing to have more abundant life. They all receive harvest, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. It's all harvest, but the quality of it. So two believers can be in the kingdom born again, and their Christian experience can be so different. You will wonder if it's different gods that are ministering the faith life to them, because one may have life, another one may have more abundant life. It was the Lord of the harvest that gave all of them harvest, but some 30-fold some 60 fold some 100 fold it was not the seed it was the soil that was the determinant of the extent of the harvest is God helping us an encounter with the life of God John chapter 3 and verse 16 popular scripture it said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten now, theologically speaking, you know that he's no longer the only begotten. He was the only begotten as at the time of, the, of his dying. But now he's the firstborn among we the begotten because he has grafted and called us the many sons now into glory. Right? So it's not just the only begotten that whosoever believes in him 
should not perish, he says, but have life everlasting. This is the gospel of salvation. You need an encounter with Jesus, the Son of God. If you do not know this, the appetite and the strength for evangelism will not be there, even if you are an evangelist. Why do I need to reach someone and talk to him about Jesus? It's more than just trying to get him to escape from hell. That is very important. The eternal security of his destiny is important, but also the quality of his living while he's here on earth. If he's to access the life of God, then it has to be through Jesus, the Son of God. Now, please look at me. Jesus is not an archangel. Jesus is not even an angel. Are we together now? Jesus is not a man. He became a man. If you say Jesus is a man, that means someone created him. He became a man means he brought himself to be a man. Are you getting my point now? Yes. Jesus, the Bible tells us the logos of God, the word of God. He became a man for the sake of men. Are we together? And I've shared it again and again why he went to heaven in his body. He went to heaven as a man so that he can come back. Because if, if he went as a spirit, he would need to look for a body to come back. But the angel said, this Jesus you have seen, he will return. There is a law called the law of territory. You cannot operate in this realm. Whether you any kind of spirit, including God, you must have a body that escorts you here. So the word became flesh so that it would dwell among us. Then we beheld his glory. So he went back bodily so that he can return now. It is going with his body that assures us that it's not a scam that is coming back. The assurance of salvation is that he was justified in the flesh. That's why the Bible calls it the mystery of godliness. That God became a man. And today he's seated at the right hand of the Father, not as a spirit, with the same body he used on earth. So we know that he can return back because there's no hindrance to his coming. The condition for his returning is that you have a body and he has that body. And that is also why he can still act on earth because he still has a body called the church. It's the body of Christ. So he can still use that body to walk. Are we blessed? An encounter with the Son of God. When people are not saved and they don't take Jesus serious, when our family members are not saved and they don't take Jesus serious, it's not just, it's not just the issue of evangelism alone. It is death. It is death. Both here in this life and outside of that life. You will say, oh, apostle, but they are rich. Let me tell you, there is a vacuum that God created in man that only his size can fill. Money cannot fill it. Education cannot fill it. I've had the privilege to be around a few successful people and I can tell you, regardless of all of those physical things, there is a peace that only God, he said, peace I give you, my peace. There is the type you can get when you build a house. Congratulations. There is a type you can get when you go to school. There is a type you can get when you have children. But there is a kind of peace only God gives. He said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Anyone who claims to have that peace without Jesus is lying. My highest definition of success is peace. More than progress, more than achievements, peace. There are many people who today who will pile up their achievements like a rubble and set it on fire in search for peace. The peace of God is a gift. You can sit in the midst of storms and laugh by an agency ordinary human beings cannot explain. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? One of the proofs that you have met the Son is peace. That is peace in your heart. You see, this, this running around that people do around life, hey, hey, there is nothing that is truly an emergency when you have the peace of God. Because you are assured that even in life and in death, you are victorious. But you see, many times when we save people, we miss the peace part. I know you are saved, 
not just that I check, I cannot see that righteousness. It's a gift and it's spiritual, but I can see the peace of God in you. Peace is not carelessness. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Because you are already crucified with Christ. And it is appointed for men to die once. And if you are, you are dead once already, the devil will not trouble you again. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding is, is in a realm that is higher than understanding. So someone looks at you and says you are stupid because the peace of God is in you. It secures you. You, you are not looking to prove a point to say, look, I, I will show you. I'm, no, 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 no. That is, that is the life of one who does not have the son. The security that that peace gives you, gives you rest. Just to let you know that your salary will not come this month. And that trouble wants to come and the peace of God says, go to bed. If God is awake and you are awake, who is leading who? If he's awake, sleep. He is called the keeper, not just the owner of Israel. The keeper of Israel. That's a language of responsibility. Everybody say, I have peace. Prophesy to every trouble. Say, I have peace. For God's sake, there are people who continue to die. Did you know, I say it humorously. Sir, you know, BP and high blood pressure used to be something for people maybe in their 50s or 60s. But now you see someone 20, 21 having high blood pressure because there is a manipulation. Satan is manipulating this system and robbing us of the value of peace. We give up our peace in a heartbeat searching for mundane things. Let me tell you, if you have ever asked, what do I have that a non-believer does not have? If it's a house, you lied. If it's education, you lied. Let me tell you one thing that they do not have, the peace of God. That surpasses. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.